What attracted me to Lisa Cray, like I said, of course, was I love how quaint it was and that I love the environment where the location was. I also really love the weather. I think it's, I've had a fun time here. I've learned a lot. I made a lot of good connections with people. I think it's been overall a great experience for me. Uh, my name is Josh Yoder. I am an assistant professor of theater here at Lees McRae. We are a small but uh, mighty theater part department. Um, we have several different programs within our umbrella theater program. One of them is theater arts and that's a generalist take. So basically what we do in that track is that for that degree students come in and they get to do a little bit of everything theater wise. So we're interested in those students graduating, knowing how to costume, knowing how to do some lighting, knowing how to work on sets, and also be on stage, uh, backstage, stage management, all the above. We also have a BFA in musical theater, and that is more geared towards the musical theater performance. Uh, those students will be doing more um, stage work, they'll be doing more performance classes, and also a good bit of dance classes. And then we have a theater arts education, which focuses on translating the theater arts skills into the classroom, and then theater arts administration, which is a brand new and exciting program that trains theater artists also in management skills, so it's sort of a hybrid business and theater degree um, that our students who graduate with that degree will come out of here knowing how to run a theater and being confident in doing so. Our students get to see us in such a variety of roles because they'll be down here working with me as a costume designer. There have been times when I was the director and the costume designer, or when I was the director and the music director. Uh, they see me in, in different ways. They'll see each of us in the classroom teaching one thing, and then they'll work with us outside in a show doing something else. In, in today's theatrical climate, the more things you know how to do, the better off you're going to be because a, a lot of folks get to New York or they get to Atlanta or LA, wherever it is they're trying to go make it as a theater artist and they find that having more skills at hand will get you more work and work leads to work. So you could get sort of a backdoor entry into a, a role that you want to play on stage by knowing how to uh, be a good assistant stage manager or be a good deck hand. So our goal is that when someone graduates from our program that they're able to take that knowledge and take the skills they've honed and, and just run into any theater gig and be competent with that. Something I never thought I'd do was pursuing a minor in tech theater. I thought I was strictly an actress and that's all I wanted to be. Um, but not anymore. I've seen you know, the diversity of what happens behind the scenes and I think it's very interesting. And then I've gotten to do work study with Dr. Mike in the costume shop and I love doing that. And so, I don't know, Lise McRae's really broadened my horizons to I'm not just an actress. I can do other things and fulfill that want to create and entertain. Having the costume shop is very helpful to people who want to like be a costume designer and help with the wardrobe for the actors and I think that having the stagecraft shop is very helpful because there may be people who just want to build the props and make things for the set and I think that having the dance studio is good for people who want to be a full well-rounded performer that wants to act, sing, and dance and I think the auditorium just helps us prepare for what it's like to be on stage and to be in front of a crowd. I've always told students that I've gone to three separate colleges. So I've seen the range of the, the, the small school, the medium-sized school, and the very big school. And this is the one, this is the size that I would, I almost wish I had gone to a small school to start with. Um, and I've definitely stayed here because I like knowing my students. Having a small class size, both in your actual classes and as your grand scheme class, like I'm class of 2022, it's just, it gives you a sense of family without being really with your family. You're gonna graduate with 200 best friends from your same college because we all know one another. We all have been in the same classes together. Josh in acting class can give you notes that he couldn't give to a 200 person class with one person doing a monologue. It's not the same and just the personal connection you make with the professors to where they know, you know, hey, this monologue's really not for you, or hey, this one is, let's try this one, you know. It's, 
just everyone learns each other's personalities and ebb and flow and it all just ends up flowing so well together once it's all come together. We do three fully staged productions a year and then also a student written, student directed evening. It's, sometimes there are plays that the students are writing, sometimes it's just scenes and, and plays that they've decided to direct. So there are multiple chances for them to hone their craft and to be involved in all these different aspects of theater making from the get-go. So I would say a great deal of our learning is experiential that we are always both in the classroom, up on our feet, learning how to build things, or learning how to interpret a scene, or, or learning how to direct a scene, learning how to deliver a monologue. All of the work that we do is, is built towards experience. And so much of that also comes into play with the plays that we produce. I really enjoyed the fact that it was more of, I was able to like do stuff rather than being, being seated and having to be lectured, I was actually having the opportunity to be the one doing the actions. And then I think what really made me enjoy theater is when I was in Big Fish, when I finally got a chance to perform in the show. So that really made me enjoy what it was like to be in theater. I got cast as a lead my freshman year, um, fall semester, as Inga in Young Frankenstein. And oh, it was such a diverse role. I had to learn to yodel backwards on a hayride. I mean, it was a lot. There was a lot happening with an accent. It was, it was wild. You know, if we had a program of 100 students, half of them probably would never be on stage in a year. We wouldn't need them. And if we did, we'd have a lot more option, a lot more variety of students to pick from. So you might get one show, and that may be the only show you get to do. Here, because we are small, they will probably, many of them, may get to be in two shows in a year. Some of them may be in three shows in a year. Here in the tiny town of Banner Elk, believe it or not, we've got two operational, uh, professional theaters. There's Lee's McRae Summer Theater, and there is Ensemble Stage, which is a small 99-seat um, professional equity house across the street from us. And our students, in the time I've been here, which is two years, have acted and worked backstage at both of those venues. So it is quite possible for a student coming into our theater program to leave here with two different professional theater credits on their resume without leaving town. I sent in a reel on a whim um, to Doc Spear to be in summer theater here at Lee's McRae and I didn't expect, I expected ensemble which would have been perfect. I would have been thrilled with that because it was my first professional job and and so she said, you know, hey, I want you to be ensemble for the Norman Rockwell show, um, but if you could send in a few lines of Mrs. Wormwood, who is Matilda's mom and Matilda, a few lines of from her and then her song, that would be great. And I was like, okay, yeah, i do it. So I got an email and it said, hey, I want you to be ensemble and would you accept the role of Matilda's mom? And I was like, yeah, I can do that, sure. No problem. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my God, mom, I got it. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I've personally worked at um, Haunted Horn for Horn of the West and Tweetsie Railroad. So there's a lot of outdoor theater around us. And I believe that Lisa Cray flocks to that. I believe we have a lot of alumni and people who worked here flock to that. So it's not incredibly difficult to find the connection and learn networking, be able to put yourself, being a Lisa Cray student, you're not, it's not hard to put yourself out there and find work opportunities and audition for them. Throughout the summer, there were so many um, unknowns. We met weekly to, uh, on Zoom, trying to figure out what are our parameters? What are our limits? Um, what are our opportunities? What can we do? What can we not do? Because we're just not gonna be allowed to have you know, 120 people or 200 people in the theater at the same time. We knew we wanted to give the students, we didn't want to just cancel everything. We can't. When you're in a program like ours, the students have to have the creative outlet. You can't ask them to just take a semester and do nothing. I actually appreciate that they're still trying to give us the theater experience, that they still want to put on shows. And I think that for people in the theater department that was really helpful because we still want to be able to perform, we still want to be able to do theater things. So I think that them going the extra mile to make a stage and actually 
record like make recordings of these shows is very exciting because we're still being able to express ourselves and being able to perform. So we thought, okay, outdoor theater is becoming very talked about, doing things outdoors where you can distance and you can you can still have your performance but you don't have to be right on top of each other. And then we thought about, okay, we're gonna be wearing masks. We're gonna be doing distancing on stage. Well, the most logical route to take is either radio dramas. The other thing, of course, is reader's theater or staged readings. I think it's a really unique way to go about this. Um, we live in this great, beautiful outdoor area. I think, it's, I think it was great that we are now utilizing that. It shows that we're able to think um, on our feet and because when all this happened, we didn't know if we were even coming back to school. And then when we finally got that green light, it was a, kind of a two week, we got it all together. And now here we are within only a week and a half, we've already built a stage almost. We always encourage students to audition at the North Carolina Theater Festival and at the Southeastern Theater Conference. And we have several students every year who are going to be auditioning and then they're seen by hundreds of industry professionals during those conferences. It's just a fun, there's, there's not a lot of pressure, you know, after the audition's over and the nerves are gone. It's just a fun weekend of learning about theater and growing in theater and meeting people who also enjoy theater. There's two things I really love about Lise McRae and one is the small close-knit nature of our program, that it's a program where people can roll up their sleeves and just get to work as soon as they get here but it's also not so small that everyone's exhausted all the time. If you like the smallness and you like the family style atmosphere, then definitely this is, this is where I want to be.